Clippard looking for a clean inning here in the seventh. Hit well out to right center field. Jones still on the move, running out of room, and he makes it. Ortiz in the deep right field. Back is Sheffield. We'll see you later tonight. Chance of a lifetime for Luis Gonzalez. 2-2, bottom of the ninth. Game seven of the World Series. Bases loaded. Infield in. One out. Floater. Center field. The Diamondbacks are world champions. Here's the pitch to him. A line drive down the right field line. Episode number six. I'm Blake Fryer alongside Dylan Smith. Uh, Dylan, special guest on hand uh, with us for episode six, TJ Antone, pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. It was uh, pretty cool to talk to him, huh? Yeah, I met TJ back in Louisville when I worked with the Reds. Great guy. Um, I think you guys are going to really enjoy this one. Yeah, uh, first stop, we'll just mention the listeners, kind of uh, new stuff that we got going um, for the podcast. We just launched a brand new website uh, called chasing2.com and uh, I want you to tell the listeners kind of what's going to be on that website. Yeah, we just started producing some articles. We've gotten some writers. If you guys would like to join, just hit us up. Um, and then also our videos. Our videos are on there. And yeah, if you want to contact us, that's where to find us. Yeah, and also yesterday, uh, last night, just say, um, we had some late night thinking and we actually started up on uh, a brand new Instagram. So um, we're going to be posting snippets of uh, the interviews on there. We're going to post uh, links to the articles and uh, just a little stuff like that. So um, we're on all four media, social media platforms, I should say. But um, yeah, chasing2.com is the website and our Instagram is chasing2media. So uh, we'll jump right into it. Um, no secret, injuries, injuries, injuries all season long. Um, Bo Bichette, a uh, big blow for the, the Toronto Blue Jays. He got placed on the 10-day IL with a right knee sprain. Uh, it was originally reported that um, he's going to be out four to six weeks, which would be most likely the end of the season. But Bobochet went for a second opinion, and it turns out it's not as bad. Uh, the Blue Jays might have caught a break. Yeah, they were saying that maybe he'll be back a little bit sooner, and if that's the case, then maybe the Jays can still turn it around. Yeah. Um, they're very young. You know, it doesn't look likely. Probably not. But, mm -hmm. you know, with where the AL is at right now and the standings, of course, there's a chance for the Jays right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Bo Bichette was on a, a nine-game hitting streak, just tearing the cover off the baseball. I think he was sitting like 444 on that streak, uh, uh, OPS over uh, 1,200. So um, he, was, he was off to a good start for a sophomore campaign. Uh, definitely a kick in the gut for Blue Jays fans. Another uh, up-and-coming star, you can probably call him a superstar right now, is uh, – Acuna uh, for the Braves. Um, he went on the IL with wrist inflammation. Ozzy Alves is a little bit banged up. I mean, the, the Braves just can't seem to catch a break with all these injuries. Yeah, I heard today that they're going to bring up Christian Pache, one of their top prospects, yeah. helping prospects to take Acuna's spot. Yep. Not take his spot, but fill in while he's hurt. Yep. So hopefully he can succeed. And if, that, if he does, it's just going to make that outfield even stronger. So that's the name I would look out for during this absence of Acuna. Yeah. Um, we'll see what Christian Pache can do. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's definitely uh, a prospect that you're going to want to keep an eye on. Another injury, Tommy Pham, um, who was in his first season with the uh, San Diego Padres. Um, very similar to the injury that happened to Matt Olson last year. Uh, he's out four to six weeks, the, the hammock bone in his left hand. Um, very, very, uh, very weird injury. I mean, that's a, kind of a tough injury to recover from, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I think that we're seeing it a lot more now for some reason. Maybe that has to do with launch angle or, yeah. uh, you know, or maybe swing path. I'm not sure, but um, it seems that that injury is starting to get a little bit more popular uh, mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. It's definitely a blow for yeah. the Padres. Yeah. They traded Manny Margot and Hunter Renfro this offseason. So, obviously, Correct. that's two depth pieces that are gone already. So, we'll see who takes over in the outfield. Trent Grisham has been great to this this point for them so 
hopefully he can continue to produce in the outfield. Uh, sticking with the San Diego Padres, uh, they lost their closer to a season-ending elbow surgery injury. Um, Kirby Yates, uh, you know, he had, a, he had a decent year last year, I thought. Um, and, and he's a guy that, that is a reliable arm in the, at the back end of the bullpen. And um, they're going to have to rely on, on Drew Pomeranz to, to get him some saves on the stretch. Yeah, and they also just added Luis Patino. Maybe he's, you know. For sure. He, he's a, and, he's got a big arm too, yeah. Yeah, he's got a big arm. And maybe you put Pomerantz in that back end, but maybe Patino becomes that eighth inning guy if he can, you know, succeed at the MLB level. I honestly I haven't seen much on him and how much he's pitched. But, yeah. Um, well, we'll see. I mean, it sucks for the Padres. Two, you know, big pieces of what they're doing right now are going down. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for now, Tatis is leading the charge right yeah, now. And yeah. if they keep scoring the runs at the pace that they are, that I think they'll be okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to Tatis in a little bit here. Um, one more injury we got to talk about is Steven Strasburg. That, that right hand still bug, bugging him. He's, he's dealing with carpal tunnel. He's got some nerve damage in that right pitch hand. You were a pitcher. I mean, just kind of walk me through, like, what that can be like if you have nerve damage in your throwing hand. Well, I personally had a lower body injury, as you know. I had reconstructive foot surgery, mm -hmm. um, which that's <laughs> – I would say lower body injuries in baseball are the worst. But this is scary because they just gave him that big contract, and now, you know, he's barely pitched this year, even though it's a – it's a short season. They're coming off the World Series. So, in, in my mind, I think management's saying, you know, let's take it really easy with them and get them back for 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, arm issues always, you can't do anything without your arm if you're a pitcher. Yeah, so for sure. um, they, they suck. They're, it feels like arm injuries are really, they, they just are nagging injuries. Your shoulder mm -hmm. will just be barking for a while. Your elbow will be barking for a while. And, it, you know, it, it does take time to heal from those things. Uh, now we're going to shift over to the Bronx, New York, New York Yankees, I should say. Hit with the injury bug yet again. Um, Giancarlo Stanton, since he's came over from the Miami Marlins in that mega trade, had to stay healthy. Um, he's on that. He's on the shelf with a hamstring injury again. And um, a guy uh, who was off to a hot start um, at the start of this year was cranking homers 450 feet, 460 feet, and now he's on the shelf again with uh, with an injury. Uh, j just unfortunate for this guy, man. Yeah, I mean we. We talked about it a couple of pods in a row now. Stan and Judge, can they stay on the field? And the answer again is no. And yeah, yeah. It, and you know we we're going to get into it. DJ LeMay, who's also out. Judge is also out right now. So three of their biggest pieces are gone. But last year they had Mike Ford and Talkman <laughs> and yeah. Gio Urshela. Can those guys repeat and do it again for them? I don't know the answer to that question, but they looked really good against a pretty crappy Red Sox team. Yeah, you know this weekend. So, you know, we'll see once they start facing some better opponents. Uh, yeah. For up. yeah, for sure. I was just gonna mention that um, a guy that has a huge opportunity now has got to be Clint Frazier, a guy that's uh, been kind of behind the depth chart, stuck in a numbers game and behind that outfield. Now he gets a chance to uh, to play every day, so he's got to be uh, happy to get this opportunity. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll see Miguel Andujar back up. They optioned him a couple. I think maybe a week ago. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll be up and maybe this is his chance to get going again. For, from for sure. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Casey Mize, uh, one of the top prospects in baseball, he's going to make his debut. Uh, we're recording on Tuesday. So he'll be recording uh, his debut tomorrow and we'll be releasing this episode on Friday. So when the episode drops, uh, he'll already have made his debut. Um, he's the number top or sorry. He's the number eight prospect in baseball. Um, second best pitching prospect. Um, how excited are you to see this kid pitch? Yeah, I've been excited for him for a while. You know, Nate Pearson already got his debut. Yeah. And he's had his rocky moments. I'm not sure how he's going to do in his first year. What yeah. do you think? Do you think that he'll come in the league and be right away dominant? Or do Who? you think – You're talking Pearson or Mize? Not Mize, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, yeah, Mize. I think uh, – this guy's got good stuff. Um, he, he's got a he's got a wipeout breaking ball. He's got he's got a good fastball. He he he, he is pretty similar to Nate Pearson. I think that's a very good. Um, they're they're pretty 
to um, comparable pitchers, I think Casey Mize could come in and make some noise. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what he does uh, tomorrow night uh, against the dangerous White Sox team. I mean, that, that team's loaded with Luis Robert, Moncada, um, you know, other guys, to Grandal. Um, they're, they're absolutely loaded up front. Um, Edwin Encarnacion, so – um, he might struggle a little bit in his uh, in his first uh, start, but uh, it'll it'll be interesting to see what he does for sure. Yeah, and the Tigers need him if he yeah. can come in and even just throw up maybe a four ERA but eat some innings. Yeah. You know that's a that's a boost to their their rotation. So I'm glad that he's getting his feet wet this year, and maybe the Tigers will make some big splashes this off season and start moving in the right direction in that division. I got a question for you. Um, so this shortened season, you're, you're seeing uh, a lot of teams uh, bring up their top prospects and, you know, they're, they're still getting the extra year of service. Are, are we, you know, we going to see a, a new trend now? Are our teams going to be quick to bring up these prospects or do you think, or do you think they're going to still play that manipulation game with the service time? Well, yeah, the CBA is going to change for that. I mm -hmm. mean, for now with this shortened season, you could bring up, the prospects and you're still going to have them for another six years so it doesn't this year doesn't really matter if they're yeah. close mm -hmm. might as well bring them up yeah. might as well get their feet wet in my in my for mind sure. for sure um but yeah we'll see in this next cba if they change the service time i think that they will go down in arbitration years i'm thinking maybe instead of six years you're gonna have four years for sure um, yeah so two on rookie contract two arbitration years then you'll go to free agency and maybe they'll come up with some type of franchise tag or some yeah, type of like uh, fifth yeah. year, yeah, like a fifth year tag that they could do on their superstars. Um, but we'll see. I I think that the players are going to fight the most for for service time um, and the next CBA. That's going to be a really big talking point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like I mentioned, Joe Adele, um, Luis Robert, Nate Pearson, now Casey Mines among those top prospects that I've got called up this year to the major leagues. Now we're going to go over to the Cincinnati Reds here before we toss it over to TJ Antone's interview. Cincinnati Reds, um, they had a little bit of uh, a COVID uh, outbreak. I wouldn't say outbreak, but uh, a guy tested positive and uh, – all the other players came back negative, so that was a good sign, but they, they still missed some games, but uh, they look like they're going to be back on track now. Yeah, I would say go over to Trevor Bauer uh, on momentum. Yeah. Uh, you know, after talking to TJ, he was putting us on to momentum, and I had never watched the vlogs that Trevor Bauer is doing this season yeah. um, with the COVID testing, and um, it it's awesome. I would go <laughs> spend some time watching those videos Trevor Bauer is doing a great job with momentum. Obviously, he's got a production team and lots of money to do it, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's very well put together, um, and I really enjoy it. So for our listeners, I would go look up Trevor Bauer on YouTube and and uh, check out those vlogs he's been doing on the COVID testing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think I watched a couple episodes now. He's just a guy that speaks his mind. Uh, he doesn't give uh, to uh, rats uh, – um, you know, I can't swear on this, obviously, but uh, <laughs> um, he doesn't really care what people think about him. Um, he speaks his mind, and he really gives a good outlook on, like, the behind the scenes that we can't see very much. I mean, he he breaks down, like, what he eats during the day, during COVID, uh, back what he does when he's at the hotel, on off days. Um, it, it's pretty cool. So uh, definitely uh, go check, check it out. Uh, should we toss it over to uh, T.J. Antoine's interview? I think we should. Here we go. This interview is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a brand new sports prop bet app, and you can receive an additional $20 when you spend the first $20 or more. Use the code CHASING2 to earn that $20. That's code CHASING2 to earn $20 when you spend $20 or more. Get your prop bets in today. I'd like to welcome a special guest to the Chasing Two podcast, a member of the Cincinnati Reds, a pitcher, TJ Anton. TJ, uh, thanks for joining the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. TJ, you were drafted in 2012 at high school by the New York Mets. Um, what made you decide to go to TCSU instead of going pro? <laughs> TCU. <laughs> or TCU, yeah. sorry about that. Um, yeah, like a lot of, a lot of thought went into it. Um, I, at the time, I just thought that, like, TCU would develop me better. Um, and 
in the end, it, it, the development that I needed at that age was maturity. So I didn't think, uh, I didn't think that going pro, I was ready for that, like living on my own and like becoming an adult right out of high school. And so, yeah, I got a cool opportunity, got drafted, but um, there's like tons of other things that you have to be able to do before you're just, you know, a professional baseball player that like I've never had, I had never had lived on my own. And um, to be honest, I was mama's boy. And just like, I was kind of scared of like going super far from home. And so TCU was closed about 30 minutes from the house and uh, just kind of like learned about life. And like, so yeah, I chose TCU and, and it was a great choice. Yeah. And after a year at TCU, you went to Weatherford College. Um, what was the difference between JUCO life and then Division One athlete life? Yeah, it's it was a huge difference. Um, TCU is very glamorous, big D1, got a dietitian, got, you know, really good food and, you know, um, great classes, mentors or uh, tutors and uh, just people around like to help you out. Like, you know, the, the clothes we're wearing are all Nike and like, you know, the sponsorships are just all nice. The facilities are nice. Uh, and then you go to JUCO and it's like, whoa, <laughs> it's a grind. <laughs> and, not, you know, everything's all the fancy frilly, frilly stuff is taken away. And, you know, it, it was good, though, because like that's what I needed. I needed some of that taken away to kind of like focus back in and be like, all right, you know, what? I'm here for baseball. I'm not here for all the extravagant like you know, the life of TCU, uh, it can be very distracting and there's, you know, it's fun, but it was very distracting and um, it was good to like kind of get away, be out in the, the boondocks a little bit and, uh, you know, focus on baseball. Uh, later that year in 2014, you were drafted a second time this time by the Cincinnati Reds in the fifth round. Um, did you feel like you did mature over that time when you went back to college and, uh, what was your thoughts, um, your initial reaction to your, with your family? Yeah, so I, yeah, I matured a lot. I matured mostly at like TCU, just learning how to like do life better. Like, I mean, just simple things. And uh, went to Weatherford and, um, you know, locked it back in, like I had said. And I, I actually met my wife, my future wife at the, at the time, my girlfriend at the time, future wife now, uh, at TCU. And so I started dating her when I went to Weatherford. So she, you know, honed me back in also and kept me focused and um, it was a great companion and, and support from her uh, going through that. And yeah, I, I learned a lot from coach Wallace, the pitching coach over at, uh, at Weatherford at the time. Uh, I had my velocity had dropped a little bit when I was going to TCU. I was trying to get too like, you know, just cute and stuff. Uh, just trying to like learn how to pitch at a higher level. And I didn't really know how. And um, coach Wallace was like, no, you just need to throw hard. Like let's just throw the ball hard and, and we'll flip, go from there. So kind of learned, got a, got a couple miles an hour back. And um, yeah, I mean, then I ended up getting drafted. I, I did, had a really good year that year and I ended up getting drafted and uh, it was a fantastic, a, a fantastic experience. I uh, was up in the Cape Cod league. I was going to play summer ball up there and I was there for two days and um, my agent texted me. It was like, Hey, uh, don't practice with the team. You know, I don't want you to get hurt or anything. So just take one day off. And then like, if you don't get drafted, then like you can practice with them and everything. So I ended up getting drafted that second day in the fifth round. And it was just, uh, I, I wasn't with my family or anything. They weren't up there with me, which kind of uh, sucked, but uh, they were, you know, always supporting me. Um, and it, it, it was just a great, it was so wonderful to like, you know, have that opportunity by the Reds and they took the chance on me. And it was just, it was so, it was awesome. Yeah, and once you got into the minor leagues, you got up to AAA within three years, but then I needed Tommy John. Walk us through that rehab process and, you know, what were the emotions like? Um, what was the motivating factors that you had? And then did you ever have any, you know, those doubts, those low days? Yeah, so to go back a little bit, um, I had just finished a, a pretty good year at, uh, in high A. And then, like you said, I, I got moved up to AAA at the end of the year to spot start, and I did well there as well. Um, went through the off season, through like you know, play, you know, got my arm ready for season. It wasn't like recovering as well. Um, I noticed like I would throw, and it would just like take longer to like get like feel good again. Um, so I was actually going so pretty much had a lot locked in spot at, at Pensacola um, in the starting rotation three of the starting rotation pitchers were uh, me, um, Luis Castillo, which uh, he's like a pretty familiar name, and Tyler Malley, <laughs> which is also a yeah. very familiar name. Um, so, I mean, that we had a really, you know, strong 
starting rotation and um yeah i was just like immediately i was excited to go work with them and and um you know learn from them and then all of a sudden like my elbow was just screaming and i'm like uh that's not good man this is not good so i'm just like okay no i'm just gonna push through it a little bit uh I'm not gonna say anything to anyone i just told him it was like some forearm tightness i was trying to push through push through and it just wasn't working um got got an mri I pretty much knew it was torn, uh, got the results back. They said it was like 75% torn, just, you know, absolute like dread, man. It was just like, are you serious? Like, this is just, this is the worst moment of my life. I mean, it, it was the worst moment of life up until that point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that is like all of my experience. And, um, so I was at crime calling my parents, you know, going through it. And then like at the same time, you know, we're finishing up spring training and all of my friends like in pro ball are like leaving and going to their season. And then I have to stay in Arizona and like even more, like, I can't even explain it. It was almost like this, like, uh, like homesick feeling, but it like wasn't homesick. It was just like all my friends were leaving and like, I couldn't go with them. You know, it was like a FOMO of like, Oh my gosh, I'm missing the season. And like, I have to stay here and like get surgery, you know? So it was just a lot of emotions. Um, talked to my mentor right after that. He locked me back in. He was like, nah, this is like the season for growth. You know, like you got, you have to change your mentality because like it all starts like right here. And if you just sit in this like depression mode, like your body is not going to heal. Like your body follows you, you know, your, your brain, like, you know, your body follows your brain. So if your thoughts aren't right, like you're just, your body's not going to heal right. So, all right, you're right, you're right. So I took it super seriously, like over the top, like made it a, made it a competition essentially. Um, you know, we there were some other guys that had just gotten Tommy John surgery, like four of us that were within a week, and uh, one of them was Jeremy Kivel, which is like one of my best friends now, and I'm uh, actually probably gonna open a business with him pretty soon, uh, baseball facility. But went through with him, full competition mode, and that that dude is a competitor, and um, lived with him. And it ended up being so much fun uh, in a way. Like, it was like that that season of my life, just like I was dreading it and I didn't want to do it. And uh, like, I had all these like negative thoughts associated with it. But then like looking back, it was so much fun being able to uh, just go through that experience and learn about the human body and like, just lock it in. You know, it's like, this is what it's about. Like re re repath my arm and uh, getting getting healthier positions. It was really cool. It was, it was a whole slew of emotions, but Honestly, I couldn't have done it without my mentor uh, pointing me in the right direction and, you know, locking me back in, uh, n- not only like mentally, but al- also with my faith and, uh, you know, locking it back in with the church that was nearby and, and just having that support group that uh, was there for me, you know, through that really tough season of my life. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Blake. Go ahead. Um, quick question. I saw that you were working real hard this off season. What did you do differently than other off seasons? Because I saw, you know, the obviously a little background, me and TJ met when I was with Louisville last year. That's how we kind of, you know, formed a little relationship there. And I saw the velocity grow, you know, the growth over the off season and now getting to the major leagues. What did you do differently before we jump into that debut? Yeah. So I did a few things different. Um, really, analyze my body and like what am I good at what am I bad at and I pretty much came to figure out like you know the people I work out with APEC and uh, Ryan Stones the guys I work with uh, came to figure out that I'm actually I was really good at like moving heavyweight well I moved heavyweight really well I was a strong human being uh, but I didn't move lightweight very well I was like moving it roughly the same like meters per second and like velocity um, as heavyweight so it's like well as light as weight goes lighter you should be able to move it faster um, and so I was bad at moving lightweight. I wasn't moving quick. And so I started training lightweight and they're like, Hey, we're going to lay off the weights for like a, you know, six weeks and just only focus on moving fast. Like that's all we're going to do is just move fast, move fast, move fast. And so I took a little training block and focused on speed work. Um, I quit it on sinkers. I throw like o- only four seams now. So that's like a little, like just the mentality of like a sinker versus a four seam. Like you're just putting more effort. You're staying behind the ball a little bit better. Um, and then like, I did a little bit different training, uh, did some swings, uh, that like really helped with like rotational velocity. So like there's a little accumulation of a lot of things. Uh, I was eating a lot healthier too. Um, and just accu- accumulation of all those things, you know, it came out and then, and then, you know, you got your first big league camp and you know, big league camp, like your adrenaline's like, dude, this is it, you know? And so 
your body knows like, Hey, it's go time. So like, I think my first outing, I was like 94, 98, which is obviously, you know, yeah. I was not that, <laughs> I was not that last year. I was like mm -hmm. 90, 93 and would like reach back, hit a five, maybe a six in a game. And now I'm just, I'm sitting like 95, 96 in most games. Like I'll, I'll hit a couple sevens most games. And uh, yeah, just like, it was really good. Um, really good training uh, stimulus by APEC and the people I work with over there. And, um, you know, I hope to go back to this off season and, and hopefully find some more flaws so we can get after it. And maybe I'll, I'll be sitting like 97, touching a hundred next year. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Never stop growing. Yeah, TJ, a couple of weeks ago, you got the call um, that you're going to be in the major leagues for the Reds. Uh, where were you when you got that call and uh, what were the thoughts going through your head? Yeah. So um, I was, I was at the house and the pitching coach at our, at our alternate site shot me a text. He was like, Hey, are, are you at the field? I was like, like looking at my schedule. I'm like, no, nah, like I wasn't going to get there for like another hour. And, um, and I started freaking out. I'm like, like oh, am I late or something? Is there something on the schedule? I missed? It's like, Hey, can you just come by? Like, like we need to talk to you about some stuff like going forward. I, I'm still thinking like I missed a meeting. Like I'm, I'm kind yeah. of freaking out. Like, all right, yeah. <laughs> the training site from where I'm at right now is about 30 minutes north. So I'm driving like a maniac trying to get up there. So I get there and like I, I walk in and I change clothes and like the club, he's like looking at me all weird because he already knew. And I'm like, what this, what's this guy problem? Like, he's like <laughs> looking at me, like watching me get dressed. I'm like just trying to throw clothes on and like go to this meeting. And um, he, he said something weird and it, now I, I remember it. He was like, oh, why are you getting dressed? Like everybody, when they show up, they, you don't wear your street clothes anymore. Like you immediately change, then you go do like whatever you need to do. Even if you're just hanging out your locker, you change and you just hang out your locker, you change your clothes. So he said like, oh, why are you changing clothes? And I was just like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. And I like, so I left. And then as I'm walking, I'm like, I wonder if I'm getting called up to the big leagues because like, why else would he say that? And I walked in the meeting and we're actually having a meeting about uh, my bullpen I had just thrown yesterday. And so I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. Like, obviously we're talking about the, our bullpen and like game plan in the bullpen. And I asked for this game plan um, sheet. And so he actually made this game plan sheet. We we're going through it. Uh, Eric Jagers did. And so we're going through it with another, with another pitcher coach, JB, uh, James Baldwin. And, um, we're going through it and we finished. I was like, wow, this thing's super cool. Like, can you print it out for me so I can fill it out? Like, you know, all this. And at the bottom, it says like, yeah, but your next bowl won't be at Prasco. It'll be at like GABP. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> this is not real. Yeah. Like, guys, like, you know, just overwhelmed with emotions, a um, little bit of tears, big congratulations from both of them, you know, hugged it out. And then, um, right back and got undressed and then headed down to the field and then you know, they were like hey you're, you're hot tonight so I was like oh okay <laughs> so yeah it was just trying to call my my it was funny my I called my wife first and um she didn't answer she was like hey I'm, I'm facetiming my friend and I was like I literally don't care like <laughs> call me back right now it's very urgent so she called me and then I just like ended the call and facetimed her and then I was like Kels going to the big leagues She's like, no, you're not. I'm like, no, I swear on my life. <laughs> so, you know, we were all crying. Then I, I called mom. Uh, so she answers like, what do you want? I just got out of the shower. I'm like, why are people feisty with me right now? I'm just trying to tell. So my mom's like, just gets out of the shower. I'm like, mom, where's dad? And she's like, I, I just got out of the shower. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, mom, go get dad. She's like, I'm not even dressed. I'm like, well, go put a towel on. And go get dad. And she's like, no, I'm trying to like get dressed for really, really. I'm like, mom, I'm going to the big leagues, go get dad and call me back. She's like, oh my gosh, okay, bye. And then she called me back a few minutes later. And so she had like got my dad and you know, told them. So it was very cool. Went through my, you know, a couple very important people on my uh the list, you know, on my phone and uh let them all know. It was, it was very cool, very supportive, and um just it was a great day. It was very cool. That's awesome. And a couple of days later. You got to make that debut against the Cubs. You went four and a third inning. Um, only gave it one run. Um, tell us about that. Was it weird making your debut without fans? Do you think it allowed the jitters to calm down a little bit? Um, or do you think that if the stadium was full, it would be, a, you know, a little bit harder to come down from that adrenaline? Yeah. Um, so I, I got to travel in spring training 
uh, to Vegas. We had an exhibition game against the Cubs, and uh, I actually got to start against them. So I'd, I'd faced Baez and Brian Rizzo. I'd faced them before. And so that aspect of it, like, I call it, like, the intimidation because I'm, I'm not intimidated, but so it's just, like, oh, like, the awe factor of being able to face them is, like, it was kind of washed out for me already. Um, so I knew we were facing the Cubs, and I had already faced these hitters uh, a couple times and, you know, two times through the lineup. And um, so I had, I had this, like, mentality of, like, knowing what – like, having a good game plan, I guess I should say. Um, and my – coming out of the bullpen, I knew it was going to be tough – to kind of like be thinking about it. Like I, I wasn't going to be able to think about it because everybody like, hey, TJ, you're in the game. And like immediately have to warm up and like try and get going um, and not really have time to like, oh my gosh, I'm going in the big league game, like freak out, you know? Um, so that's kind of how it was. Wade Miley got in a little bit of trouble early on and I noticed it. So I started kind of moving around, warming up, like throwing some plyo balls. And then they're like, hey, TJ, you got next inning. I'm like, Oh, here we go. Let's do this. <laughs> and uh, so quickly ran up, warmed up. And uh, when I, I ran all the way out there and, you know, usually guys run to the infield grass and I got to the edge of the dirt and I had to start walking because I like was being lightheaded. <laughs> uh, like I was so excited and had so many, like so much adrenaline. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I got to walk. I need to like pull the heart rate down. So first batter, I, I, um, let me bounce off that real quick. I do, I do think it helped me a little bit with no fans there. It helped me just stay like a tick under and, mm -hmm. and being able to like control myself. Um, I'm excited to get the fans back, but I do think with the no, no fans there, um, it kind of helped me like, you know, okay, I've been here before. I've thrown on this mountain before. It's just a game. Like, let's just get after it. Uh, and then I hit the first batter and I'm like oh my gosh are you serious right now <laughs> and then the first out was like a warning track pop fly I'm like oh my gosh that was this far from being a home run <laughs> um and then the next inning I had had a couple punch outs and after that it was like good to go like all right this is just baseball we're, we're just in this we're just doing the same thing as last year yeah, TJ, uh, the final question I have for you is kind of, you know, obviously uh, the series got canceled this weekend due to um, COVID-19. Just kind of walk me through, like, what it's like um, being a major league player every single day with, like, the, the testing. I don't know how much you can elaborate on that, but if you can give us a little bit of, like, what your kind of your routine is like on a game day. Yeah, so if you have a chance, um, if you can link it for your, your listeners, watch, uh, have them – watch Trevor Bauer's vlogging. He yeah. does a really good job of like kind of showing what it's like. Um, I'd like to give you kind of my is uh, so I pretty much stay in the house until or in the apartment until about one every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I eat my breakfast here. I wake up right around nine to eat breakfast. Um, head to the field around one. As soon as we get there or sorry, as soon as I wake up, I have a there's an app called like E10 and you, you have to fill out like questionnaire about like how you're feeling do you have these symptoms what's your temperature you take your temperature and like so I fill that every morning and then I get to the field and they take your temperature again um and then every other day we take a COVID spit test so you like spit into a little uh container um that's every other day and then we so you're always having your mask on you're able to go about and do your work pretty normally um they do allow you to, like, if you're doing any, like, high intense exercise and take your mask off, it does suck to try and breathe when you have a mask on, like, heavily, uh, especially outside when it's kind of humid. But, uh, yeah, most of the stuff I'm getting done, like, normal, I would in a normal year, I'm just wearing a mask. Um, and then when I go up to the field, take it off. And, yeah, other than that, like, the temperature checks and the over-the-top, like, COVID test and, symptom tests all the time or that, that app we have to fill out it's pretty normal besides the fans and um you know just extra precautions in some in some areas staying set like a little bit more separate in some areas um but yeah other than that it's, i would say it's pretty normal we're getting our work in it's it's still baseball okay thanks tj you know we appreciate you coming on um you know try to be as unbiased as possible but you know the relationship we made at louisville you were one of the guys that I was really pulling for, man. And I just, you know, I'm wishing you a very strong and, you know, prosperous, you know, 
career, you know. So, I appreciate that, man. Thank congrats. you very much. Congrats. Thanks, congrats, guys. Thanks, TJ. Appreciate it. Yeah, that. thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Dylan, so what was your overall thoughts on that TJ Antone interview? A guy um, who had to go through the grind, uh, went to JUCO, uh, worked his way up to Division I um, pitching, and, and, you know, went through uh, Tommy John, obviously. But just what was your overall thoughts? Yeah, TJ's a great guy. Like I said, I we formed a relationship last year when I was with Louisville. Yeah. Um, I did the track man analytics, and he would come up and sit with me, and we'd we're able to, you know, sh- talk, you know, I was going to shoot the, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we, we made a relationship. It was, a, it was a pretty tight net group up there. You know, we got to know each other really well. Um, he's just, you know, I, I really hope that he succeeds in the MLB. I know he will. Yeah. He's got the work ethic. He's a, he's just a really great person. So, um, yeah, it was a grind for him. He had the Tommy John, he got up to triple A within three years and then kind of, you know, hampered his development, but he came back strong. And we talked about his velocity jump last year in Louisville. He was not 92 to 94. Now he's hitting those 98 ers So, um, you know, glad for him. You know, I'm just happy for him. Yeah. Uh, he made his MLB debut a couple weeks ago against the Chicago Cubs, had a couple strikeouts and four and a third inning. So it, it was uh, awesome to see, um, hear from him and glad he's doing well. Um, we will hop into – Clevenger and Plezak um, for a second. We talked about them last week. Um, they broke protocol. They went out and had some fun in Chicago, and uh, they got punished for it. Um, they got sent home immediately, and now um, they, they got flowered option to alternate site. Um, we didn't really touch on this as much as we could have last week. Um, do you have anything to add on this topic? Yeah, I mean, they went to Detroit and they had a team meeting and then the Cleveland Indians management turned their butts around and said, go back. Yeah, um, send them that message. <laughs> hats off. We said hats off to the Indians last week yeah. for, you know, coming down hard on these guys, but really hats off this week to the Cleveland Indians. Yep. The fact they're listening to their players and the fact that they – are taking COVID seriously and they care a guy like Carlos Carrasco. For they sure. obviously value this, this man and what they did was wrong. And that could affect the guy that is battling leukemia. Yep. Um, and instead of saying Clevenger is a very, very good pitcher and yeah. he's going to get us W's. Yep. They said, we don't care about the W's. We're yep. going to send you down yep. because this is not okay. So Hats off to Cleveland Indians. What a great, move, you know, organizational move. Yeah. Um, if anything, those guys that are still in the clubhouse, it brings them together. And um, and when it comes to Clevenger and Plezak, I'm sure they do feel bad about what they did. And um, they just have to, you know, they have to take their, their punishment with a grain of salt and say, you know what, we deserve it. You know, yeah. we'll be back up with the team. Um, or, you know, like I was going to ask you, do you see Clevenger plays that getting traded? Well, I mean, Clevenger's a good pitcher, but if you're a team, would, would you want that antics in your clubhouse? Like, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't really view him as antics. I think he's a very passionate person. He also speaks his mind. Yeah. Um, Maybe but antics is the last year, word, but like. Last year, they traded his buddy, Trevor Bauer, that we were talking about earlier. Yeah after he threw the ball in center field, that was his last start. Yep. That was the last start for the Indians. When he threw the ball over center field in Kansas city, he got traded. They don't mess around. Uh, Yeah. So they didn't mess around with Bauer. Uh, That was an antic. Yeah. This is just a boneheaded mistake. uh, Yeah, exactly. So I can, I think that if they do trade Clevenger, they're still going to get good prospects out of whatever team that they trade them to. Mm -hmm. Obviously they're searching for offensive pieces right now. They're struggling with the bats. Um, But I, I think that please going to be there because he has service time. Clevenger, I think any team would take him at this point. I mean, he made a mistake. I mean, people make mistakes all the time in, in life. People make mistakes in baseball. It's, you know, Alex Rodriguez did steroids three times and he still was able to come back. I mean, yeah. that's just an example of an, a dumb 
<laughs> just dumb choices. Yeah. But, you know, I maybe Clevenger does get traded. I don't know. But if they do trade him, He's it's going to be for something good. It's going to be for something good. Yeah. And uh, go go check out the new Indians article. Uh, new writer Kyler Phillips wrote a, a good piece on the Indians so far this season. At the quarterway mark, he touches on that Plezak and Clevenger uh, situation. It was a pretty good read. Um, the St. Louis Cardinals are back on the field after a two-week layoff. I mean, they they only played five games, and the the outbreak happened, and and now now they're back playing games. It was uh, a tough situation for uh, all Cardinals organization and the fans for sure. It's nice to see them back. Yeah, they're three and two, and their first five games back, and. I was looking at their schedule. They have seven double header games. Yeah. Uh, or days, I should say. Sorry. Yeah. 14 um, days. Yeah. 14 so, games. 14 games in a in those seven days. Yeah. If that makes sense. Crazy. Um that's gonna be tough. I mean that I mean, but they're seven inning games, so yeah. maybe that is a advantage. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know if the Cardinals make the playoffs now because yeah. they're gonna be they, tired. They're gonna be so yeah. tired. They're going to be tired, but on the you know on the other side of things, maybe they're healthy, and all these other teams are tired. Yeah, you know, the so thing right. the thing about that is though, sorry to cut you off there, but like they like they have they have such a huge hill to climb out of though. Like they only played what five games, and they're they played just played another five. They're two and three since coming back, but um, three and two uh, or right. three and two, yeah. So. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what this team does um, at the trade deadline, see if they make a move. Yeah, I mean, if they have seven doubleheader games and if they go if in four of those doubleheader days, they take two wins. I mean, that's eight wins right there. Mm-hmm. So, um, as long they can as make up ground in a quick – they can make up ground yeah, quick in these yeah. doubleheaders. Yeah, as long as they have the right pitching on those right days, you mm-hmm. know, if they got Dakota Hudson and they got Flaherty going – then I'm feeling good about in seven innings, can we win a ball game? For sure. So yeah. they pair those two up a couple of times. Um, they could definitely gain some games and make the playoffs pretty, yeah. I want to say easily, but they can make the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. And, and with uh, the expanded playoffs, you take yeah. each, every uh, top two teams in each division. So um, there, there'll be a couple of sleepers that definitely make it. We're going to hop into something that, happened last night and it, it was it was very odd and very weird I, I don't know another word to explain this but Tatis hits a home round on a 3-0 count they're up what what was it 14 to 3 or 10 to 3 or something like that he hits a grand it was 10, 10 to 3 yeah so there's a seven run deficit yeah so anyway so they're, they're up seven runs and Tatis hits a hits a grand slam on a 3-0 pitch and smacks another ballpark and and the Rangers just – this is just so unclassy. Like, people say, oh, it's an unwritten rule in baseball. Here's my thoughts. Don't throw him a fastball in 3-0. Like, don't, don't just give him a meatball. I mean, like, it's the same, same thing with, uh, with players pimping home runs. Make a better pitch. I mean, it's like – I don't understand why the Rangers are so mad about this. Um, I've played baseball – well, I played baseball for 16 years, something like yeah. that. You know, I'm, I'm 22, so. Yeah. Um, and I've never heard of this. Yeah. You can't hit a ball on 3-0 when it's a seven-run deficit. I've never heard of this yeah. unwritten rule. I I understand stealing bases when you're up that much or, yeah. you know, bunting. Yeah. Those are unwritten rules. But a mm-hmm. 3-0 pitch with the bet, one of the best hitters in baseball up, and he's raking the ball right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand what the problem – I a lot of people feel the same way as us. Yeah, for sure. Um, I saw the blowback on Chris Woodward. And for the record, I think Chris Woodward is a very good manager. Yeah. Um, but the, he's he's off on this one. I yeah, think realistically he was just frustrated with the loss. Yeah. And, you know, he's trying to, you know, in that moment – He's pissed about something. You know, I'm going to send a message because I'm pissed. And it was the wrong move. Um, I'm sure if he did tell um, the reliever that came in, uh, Gibba, I think his last name is. Yeah, he threw um, behind Machado. 
yeah, he threw behind Machado. If he did tell him to try to throw at him, I'm sure he regrets it. So yeah, yeah, he got a one game suspension. Um, and uh, I think his name is Ian. Gibrat, I don't know how to say that last name, but he got three games. He did appeal that suspension, but you're Tatis, and it, this this man, this poor man who is drilling the baseball all over the field, he has to apologize for hitting a 3-0 grand slam in a seven-run game. It, it is just absolutely wrong, and I don't I don't agree with it. There's a lot of uh, current players, ex MLB players that said to Tease, like, why are you apologizing? Like, like, what was your thoughts on when you saw that he had to apologize for hitting a home run? Yeah, and he shouldn't have apologized. I think that's just him trying to be humble. Yeah. Um, but he shouldn't have to apologize. It's a joke. Um, yeah. it, like you said, the guy's obliterating baseballs right now, and it's it's hard. Even when you know a fastball is coming, it's still difficult to hit a fastball. Yeah. I don't want to get into the whole Astros thing. But it doesn't make it easier, yes. But if you're anticipating a fastball on a 3-0 count, I mean, that's pretty ideal. But, I mean, I'm not going to – he he looked for a fastball, he got it, and he smashed it. Yeah, for sure. And whatever. There's no stat padding in baseball. No. There's no such thing as stat padding in baseball. And, and starting nine, another baseball podcast, they ended up um, – I think it was Jared Carabas. He posted uh, last year the Rangers dropped yeah. the – a, yeah, a ball in foul territory. Yeah, and a close game, so Mike Miner can get his thousandth career strikeout. The two hundred strikeout of that season. Too. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Two, was that it? Okay. Yeah, it was two hundred strikeouts that season, and he was like, "Oh, respect the game, blah blah blah," yeah. and like, I was just like, "Dude, like that. That's just a bad look for the Rangers when when, when receipts like that get get brought back up." But uh, yeah. Another feel-good story, um, the Seager brothers homered in the same game uh, for the first time. Uh, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, awesome moment. It brings me back to, like, when the Griffies, the, yeah. you know, they hit home runs together. Um, unfortunately, they're not on the same team, but um, it was a slugfest in that game. Uh, just a cool moment for their family. Um, good for them. Yeah, and then we'll wrap up just by mentioning, um, you know, we're, we're on our website now, chasing2.com. Instagram, Chasing Two Media. Um, we're going to be publishing articles. Um, if you want to join the team, uh, we're going to leave a link in the YouTube uh, video uh, to, to hit that link and uh, send us an email. Um, we're looking for writers for all teams. So, trying to, to grow this uh, as big as possible. And uh, thanks for listening. Take care, guys.